In the past two years, Peter, it's been really interesting, a really interesting time because people are talking about, they're putting the two words together, learning analytics. And in the last two years, I've been seeing a lot of um, work and effort that's going into capturing the learning outcomes, so cap capturing the data relating, relating to performance how people are using systems in terms of, in terms of capturing um, what they've been doing. So, so there's been rows of um, activities and dates and databases basically with, with the information, the numeric information um, in, in, um, in, in, a, in, a, in a form that people can retrieve and if they like number crunching, then and they're talking about uh, how people watching how people learn, watching their behaviour. But this, this has been really welcomed in in the last couple of years, and it's it's getting stronger and stronger. The the, the cry from the academic side to actually um, be able to look into these numeric um, outcomes to 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 be able to test. And their, their maybe their instruction, but but also to to see um, um, what's the climate in like in their learning environment as to whether whether it's successful or not for the students. Mm -hmm. So so that's what I've been seeing in the last two years. Okay, mm. fantastic. Mm. And so what what are you currently doing in this space at the moment? What I'm currently doing in this space is. Beavering away mostly with my PhD students, but also in, in any other projects that, in a, that that have a component of capturing people's performance in. So, so they're the projects that interest me. Why? Because I I really am passionate about learning analytics. Mm -hmm. But the learning analytics that I'm passionate about involves uh, a spectrum, if you like, and or a, or a, um, um, a continuum of activities, and and just to, to bounce back to the previous question, what's been happening in the last two years? Mm. I believe, let's say, we we use a, we use a continuum, and we've got the database people, the people who are the number crunchers on the right hand side, the people who are very heavily into the statistical evidence, if you like, love fiddling with numbers and things, which, which I do too, but I want to know what those numbers represent in terms of people's behaviour, um, the, the type of knowledge that, that, is, that they're chasing so, to, to learn. So, so I'm, the, the number crunches are at the right hand side, my research really is at the other um, end of the scale where you need to design your um, uh, instructional strategies um, very, um, very well and use robust um, uh, principles that underpin the way you interact with students depending on the knowledge that you will hope that they will develop. So it's all about um, task analysis to start with. It's all about investigating the categories of knowledge, okay. and and so then the then the the, the um, activities that gather the outcomes are, are part of the right hand side, which I still do. But mm. but, but, but I have I'm heavily into the right side of that scale. Mm, so it's kind of trying to merge them all together, is it? Merge yeah. the two sides together. Yes, yes. The whole thing is a, you know now. It's wonderful because it's sometimes you can be working in the in a qualitative sense, if you like, so that you're doing a fine-grained analysis of knowledge and tasks and skills and competency and defining those those aspects of learning, and then you th then you can when you're sick of that, or if the, or you can strike a roadblock, you can go and, and have a play around in the numbers and the categories of, 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 of how you work with those numbers and what the numbers mean. Mm, okay. And as an academic, how would you like to use 
this kind of information as, in a practical way. In a practical way, yes. yes I, I think that's really interesting. Um, in a practical way, I think that it would be really good as a, an academic to be able to easily access the database. Mm -hmm. so, that, so that we're very good at designing our classes um, and, and now there's a propensity for, 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 for that to be online. So we nearly, we really have to get that act, keep that act um, um, a comfortable one. Mm -hmm. but, 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 but knowing that especially with Blackboard or the other devices um, that, that may come along, one wishes, <laughs> But, but the, we do have devices to capture um, how students are going mm. with, the, with, the, um, with the work that they give you. So to be able to easily access that, clunky as it is, would be, would be really good. And so the other, the other practical aspect of this would be more workshops, please. Mm, yeah. So hands-on workshops. I mean, I've been to very interesting seminars and they're, they're wonderful but we can only concentrate for 20 minutes at a time we know this but actually having a having a workshop where where we're listening yes series of workshops but being able to get down and get your hands a bit grubby um it would be wonderful yeah so showing everybody how to, to use these tools and yes. things that are available yeah, yeah. okay yeah. fantastic what's it mean? Um, and so what aspect of learning and teaching do you believe would benefit most from um, learning analytics in the classroom? What, what aspects of learning and teaching yeah. do you believe would benefit from most from learning analytics? All right. I, I believe that um, for me the answer for that lies lies in the, the ability to, to point us back to the left hand side of that scale mm. so that we're, we use the data to, to enforce the, the learning principles in the, of, of the instruction. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my answer for that one. Okay, because I think you're right that's very important because a lot of staff are quite, they get a bit frightened by the the number crunching and the, all the data and stuff like that when it's on that other side so it can be difficult for them to know what to do with it and how to interpret yes, it. Yes, yes. It's just sitting there and it's like, oh, what does that mean? And and often, especially coming from the school that I do, School mm. of Business IT and Logistics, um, that, that, that ju we're just aware that, that people do need help with, uh, with the, with the hands-on stuff. Mm. I mean, we can't be experts at everything, and most of us, most of the people in this building, most academics at RMIT, well, let's, well academics at RMIT are, are, are at RMIT because they, because they love the place. It's a diverse place mm -hmm. to, 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 to work in, and so, and so the, 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 the um, stock and trade is, is, is the teaching. Mm. The love of the teaching with the interaction with this diverse mix of students. So we know we know in our school then, and it's that it's you know people's and it, it comes from the education side of things. Very often they're the worst techno comfortable people on the planet mm. because their concentration is with other things. Mm. Mm. And I think it's really difficult for a teacher in this kind of learning environment, you know, that they are expected to take on all these different skills and, you know, learning analytics obviously is a, mm. another different skill set as well. Yeah, yes, that's right. Scary to, to some. Mm. And, and then any, and, and that's, that's the bit of the worry about this too. You, you can just see the resistance thinking, okay, Big Brother is going to have the same, it's all garbage. The big brother will be watching my, you know, the somehow it will come back to the facilitator, the way of looking at the, well, I suppose the end result it might be, but 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 it's bigger than that. Mm. It's not really about that. Mm. The database side of things. Mm. Mm.
And within RMIT, are you coming across examples where um, learning and learning analytics has been used? T to be honest, no. no. Other other than and it's that's it's, it's a great pity because I I perceive the seminars that I've been in. Um, I just feel that there, and I don't know whether this is correct or not. Know, but I feel that there's a, a real resistance people are scared yeah. that the big brother is out to get the ones that don't perform. Mm. Well, I mean, and that, that won't happen because there, it's it's called the washback effect or something like that where you, can, <laughs> where you teach to, to get the good outcomes. Mm. And then there's no knowledge, it's just outcomes. Mm. So that doesn't, that doesn't serve a purpose. Mm. So, no, I don't, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm not too sure that maybe the target for this, and why, and, and it might be because I, I can't answer the question directly, is that maybe higher ed is a bit slower than this, this may be adopted, um, uh, the adoption of these techniques would be, would be easier, an easier transition in the, the type of the V, TVET, TAFE version, mm -hmm. um, sorry, part of RMIT, may very well be um, using it a whole lot more than, than the rat bags in higher ed. Mm, okay. Maybe, not rat bags. <laughs> <laughs> and so, in terms of um, the practical side of learning analytics, where would you like to see the area grow at RMIT in the next? year or so? In the next year or so, um, well the hands-on the hands-on workshops um, and and um, so, so the the workshops relating to instructors learning um, analytics so, so that's so so that, that there's emphasis put on the instruction so very heavy, very heavy, heavy emphasis in that. Mm. Um, and, and also, um, I, I also think that there should be, um, and I, I was going to try and look up the term, I didn't have time this morning, a multimedia, like a multimedia fairy or a multimedia person that, that, that I, I was calling for this uh, like 15 years ago, just, just to help with the digital um, presentation of lectures. I was one of the first ones to get into into that, believe it or not, when the when when the data wouldn't talk to the projector, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you had to get with different people with different skills for so that. So, so, so I, I believe that there should be a one-to-one -one assistant person for for each academic, mm -hmm. because what we do is, especially in higher ed, so individual. That, that it won't, maybe it's the, the end point and it's a, it's, a, it's a real wish list. But people are just so different with different skills, the academic. Yeah. But putting them into a, into a classroom or into a workshop to, to, to help them, at sooner or later, they need the one-to-one. -one. Mm. It's almost like a kind of a, a help desk specifically yeah. in this area too. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. We could hello like ITS and, and have this as the learning analytics. Okay, la la la. That would just be wonderful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then and then the the, the other part that that um, within the next um, twelve to eighteen months, if this could happen, I'd like to see a concentration on the skills inventory, which probably is happening. And then and then and then. I'd be happy because then also this is a wish list in these 12 or 18 months. So, so that this is across the university. So, because there are different skills that an individual needs in aerodynamics, and there, there. Sorry, there are a few basic across the board baseline skills that people need. I'd like to see. I'd like to see a model whereby we can tap into what they are so that we can we can see where these common knowledge domains are 
for the university. Mm -hmm. So and then and then it filters down to what you do privately in the schools. That'd be a wish list for me. Because I think it's those not well I don't think I know, it's those knowledge domains that underpin the skills. Mm -hmm.